Project Sin, Chapter 2 How did I end up here? Kelsa wandered, staring at the interface that opened up, and immediately asked her to select a companion affinity, whatever that was supposed to mean. There were ten buttons, but only three of them were visible for her. The image of what looked like a Celtic tree seemed to come to life as her gaze met it. Its leaves began shifting through seasons, bearing a multitude of colors as it passed through each. Her focus went to the button below that, and appeared to be covered in black in opposition to most of the gray ones surrounding it. After a brief moment, a mass of writhing tentacles rose, crushing what looked like the silhouettes of bodies. The final button was what looked like a small cherub, its small naked body and white wings spread full, and its face twisted into a look of bliss. That's not creepy, she thought to herself. A smile crept to her face as she lifted her hand and hovered her finger over the black button. Her eyes glazed over a moment in consideration to the horror she could inflict with something like this. She couldn't help but think of some of the more popular entertainments. These people wanted a show, no reason not to break their fantasies. She eagerly pressed the button. Nothing happened. The color quickly drained out of the panel. Kelsa frowned. A loud sound startled her, and almost instinctively she closed the interface and turned quickly to see a black ring forming in front of Liz. Her frazzled brown hair blown backwards as the immense energy of whatever was happening overwhelmed the air around them. A tentacle immediately shot out of it and snared her leg, ripping her off of her feet and dangling her helplessly in front of the black portal. A four-foot human-like figure rose from the portal. Kelsa immediately noticed its hands that ended in sharp black talons. Its skin lacked the vitality of a living creature and it showed with the pallor of a corpse. The hair looked equally as messy as Liz but was the same infinite darkness at the portal it rose from promised. It was dressed in the fur of some unknown creature, black spikes of hair protruding from the garment, along with two bone-like protrusions encompassing its core. A sunken voice began emanating from it. You intend to command me, a frail child. Liz was brought along just in front of the creature. Her freckled face just smiled at it. I'm Lizzie. Nice to meet you. With that, the creature's face broke into a half-smile, and it began to laugh in a manner that didn't really fit its overall demeanor. The tentacle whipped Liz into the air, and another caught her and brought her back down. It's been too long since anyone's made me laugh. You are as crazy as they come, to smile at death incarnate. I'm Nell. The creature ran a talon alongside the inside of its right palm, and a black substance began flowing from it. I accept your pack, extending its hand. Liz bit into her left hand, and Crimson began covering it. The creature flashed its sharp fangs as he saw this, and Liz walked over, rubbing her hands together along the way. Their hands clasped, and a faint resonance emanated between them. Nell looked over towards Kelsa. Well, shall we begin? With that, a portal swiftly opened in front of her and stole her feet from beneath her, just like it had Liz, not a moment before. Kelsa had only really been afraid twice in her life. The first was when her father had smashed a coffee cup over her head and proceeded to beat her mercilessly for spilling some milk. The doctor who had spoken with her after she had regained her faculties told her she was lucky to still be alive and still found herself crying when the images flashed back to her. The second time easily, the helplessness, she felt now. She dangled upside down not a moment before a second tentacle rose from the portal and secured her neck. Blood flushed her face as the last bit of air she was able to draw in escaped her. She was pulled horizontal, and an immense pressure of being ripped apart overtook her. Stop! Liz quickly shouted, and Nell turned back towards her. You understand that this is another summoner, correct? She is your enemy, and as a consequence, mine. She's an ally. Set her down at once! Liz's bubbly personality was completely gone, and her face showed an intensity that was uncharacteristic of it. The tentacles around her feet loosened, and she was lowered to the ground by her neck. The second her feet touched the ground, they loosened, and she took in frantic breaths of blessed air. She wiped her face and looked at the creature anew, her face strewn in terror. Nell returned her gaze with a half-two smile. A fist broke that smile as Liz delivered a right hook into the creature's maul. It was knocked off of its feet and looked up at her with a look of betrayal. Maybe I didn't make myself clear. She is our ally. Breaking her stupor, Kelsa looked over to her friend and found an equally frightening look on her face. The contrast in personality was night and day. Her face snapped back to her usual grin. Sorry about that. Guess Nell got a little carried away. 
Kelsa looked at her incredulously. A little. I could have been killed. Nell stood back up, holding his chin. I wouldn't have expected an alliance. It's been so very long since I've lived. And here my first kill was taken from me. Liz glared at him, and he looked away, spitting on the ground. Kelsa couldn't help but feel uneasy given she was almost pulled apart by whatever that thing was, and she quickly remembered that she was due a partner as well. Given the power of Nell, it would be in her best interest to summon whatever it was immediately. She pulled up her inner face. Nell's expression soured more. If she summons this Liz, we'll have a much more difficult fight on our hands. Here I thought we were lucky to have another summoner without a creature yet. Liz cracked her knuckles, and he stared at Kelsa. The interface had only two buttons illuminated this time, the tree and the cherub. The ground began to shake and she lost her footing. Upon falling, the interface closed. She tried to stand again but was quickly on her hands and knees as a rock-like formation enclosed around her ankles and locked her in place. A large stone creature rose out of the ground not a second later and swung ferociously with a boulder-sized fist. A tentacle appeared just in time and redirected the blow into the ground next to her with a seismic thud. Three more tentacles appeared and wrapped around the creature, attempting to recover its posture. Kelsa, move! Liz's voice overtook the cacophony. Can't, I'm stuck! Kelsa desperately tried to free herself, but couldn't budge the stone holding her in place. Damn it! She felt herself growing agitated in her desperation. The creature broke free of the tentacles and started dashing towards Nell, who had adopted a combat posture. A dark portal formed around him and increased another five feet in diameter. The ground began to shake as the creature glowed a faint green and continued its charge. More tentacles rose from the pool around Nell's feet and quickly braided together, forming a moving barrier. Kelsa thought the flow of it looked mesmerizing. A fist caught the side of Kelsa's face, and she lost her balance again as the result of her legs being pinned in place. Engrossed in the ensuing battle and imminent danger of the moment, she hadn't noticed that a large shirtless man built like a tank had walked up to her. He raised his fist again to strike. But he was so focused on his target he hadn't noticed Liz who leapt onto his back and bit into his neck. He howled in pain as blood began to pool at the base of his neck. I'll make you pay for that, you little bitch. He reached up and tried grabbing at her, but she was quick and had dismounted narrowly escaping his grasp. Elsa quickly began trying to free herself again while Liz kept him busy. She tried accessing her interface to maybe summon her creature, but it read unavailable. Come on. She did her best to start digging herself out. A loud yell was heard from the area where Nail had been fighting the golem. He was lying on the ground, the monster just above him rearing its arm back to strike. As it descended, Nail quickly sank into the dark ground, the fist following him. The portal immediately closed and the golem reared back in horror as the better part of his arm was ripped from its body. It howled in pain as viscous blood began pouring from its wound. Terence, now! The muscular man turned to face Liz and quickly wiped off the blood he traced from his neck. Time for the ace already, huh? He muttered. Namu! The creature swelled up several feet and began crushing the ground where Nell had disappeared. Nell rose behind the now massive golem and summoned more tendrils that wrapped around its legs. They were quickly dismissed by the golem, who turned and chopped down with its remaining hand. The blow was quaking the earth around them. Liz picked up a stick and held it like a staff poised for battle. You really think you can hurt me with that? The muscular man scoffed and began advancing on her. Liz delivered a well-executed jab, but her makeshift weapon was grabbed the moment it impacted the man's chest, and she was pulled in and grabbed by the neck. He raised her a foot off the ground and began raining blows with his other hand into her gut. Kelsa finally managed to free herself and grabbed a chunk of stone that had bound her. She raised it above her head and ran at the man beating her only friend. She leapt into the air and brought it down on his head, causing him to drop Liz to the ground who immediately curled up. He turned to his would-be assailant. Seems I'm a lucky man. To have two puny girls in a world of killers. You're going to pay a hefty price for that one, kid. Just as soon as he had finished saying this, a crack rang out and the man's head left his shoulders. Standing behind him was another man, leveling a lever-action rifle in her direction after blowing this man's head clean off. He stared at her for a few moments, then lowered his rifle. There was an equally loud crash heard beside them as the massive stone creature began to fall apart and litter the ground. You one of them summoners, miss? She couldn't help but notice the man looked straight out of one of those old-timey cowboy hollows she and would watch with her father. Jeans, chaps, a leather vest made of spotted cowhide with a single shoulder pad on the right side. 
He was holding a bandolier of bullets across his body. A handkerchief concealed his face, and a trademark hat topped it off. At a loss for words, Kelsa began stuttering, uh, uh, I think so. The man raised his rifle at her face again. I've had enough of your nut bars tearing up the place. Kelsa quickly raised her hands above her head. Listen, I just got here. I, I don't have anything to do with that. He fired the rifle into the ground next to her. Kelsa let out an involuntary scream. You're full of it, and to think how peaceful it used to be out this way. You summoners are nothing but trouble for anything and everything you come across. He continued on, building himself into a rage when a tentacle appeared behind him, bound his arms to his sides and raised him to the ground, the rifle falling beside him. No, Kelsa said. Liz stepped beside her, looking worse for wear. Liz walked over and picked up the rifle and then looked up at the man. Put me down, you dirty sons of... He stopped as Liz pointed the rifle to his head. Kelsa quickly stepped over and placed a hand on her shoulder. Liz, he saved my life. A frown found Liz's face. And so did I. Are you choosing him over me? Kelsa, realizing this was going south, quickly stepped back a bit. Listen, I, I wouldn't trade you for this man, but it sounds like he knows this world well, and at the very least, let's ask him some questions first, okay? Liz's face softened, and her smile went wide. Okie dokie. Where's the nearest town, Texas Red? As she said this, she nuzzled the man's thigh with the rifle. Who's that? Kelsa asked. I don't know. Some guy I heard about in a history lecture. Pretty fitting, though, right? She let out a little giggle. Well, you heard me, didn't you? The man was practically turning purple from how tightly the tentacles had bound him. Finally loosen up, would you now? And with that, he took in a gasp of air. I'm not telling you monsters anything. Liz traced his leg and rested the barrel against his most precious parts. I wouldn't be so uncooperative if I were you. What do you want to know? He said in defeat. Are you deaf? I want to know where the nearest town is. Liz's grin was growing more menacing by the second. Ashenford is about a half day's journey north. If you're going to kill me, please just kill me. Liz pulled the rifle back, flipped it around, and slammed the man and his boys. You're not getting out of the water that easy. Kelsey interjected. We really don't need to kill this guy, Liz. Listen, what is it exactly that you have against these summoners? What, what are they? The man winced in pain, bearing the pain of the assault. I don't know the specifics. All I know is that they just keep appearing everywhere around Elec. All of them have these crazy critters that devastate everything and everyone around them with a single word. They killed my little girl and by extension my wife as a result of the grief we endured. Truth is, I wouldn't mind dying here. At least I could see him again. Liz lowered the rifle and motioned to Nell, who put the man down. He sank to his knees, the fight gone from him. That's a pretty sad story. I can send you to them if you really want. With that, she raised it once more, the barrel directly against his head. He reached up and pulled down the handkerchief concealing his face. The right side of his cheek was ripped open and heavily scarred, exposing the underlying teeth. There isn't much waiting for me here anymore. His face looked down to the ground. Kelsey interjected and grabbed the barrel of the rifle. Seriously, Liz, he can help us. We're here to kill the others anyway, right? Her tone was a whisper as to try and keep the turmoil between them. Liz pulled the rifle away. I'm keeping this as a gift for your life, Red. He looked up, a mixture of drool and blood dripping from the side of his open face. Name's Black, actually. Black led them over to a small alcove of the wooded forest where a large cart sat its frame a mixture of wood and iron with an animal hide canopy covering it. Two large birds were attached to it with leather harnesses. They were canary yellow with three large toes, a long neck, and a very peculiar odor that Kelsa found repugnant. Hop in. I'll get us to town. Maybe we can go our separate ways from there. Liz was already petting the large bird-like creature. It appeared quite docile and seemed to enjoy the bit of interaction. Come on, Liz, Nell began. We need to prepare ourselves. She reluctantly hopped in beside Kelsa, and they were off. Ashenford used to be peaceful. Most peaceful place in all Illich. That all changed about a year back. These men started appearing, wearing all manners of uniforms and the like. Their rifles could fire continuously and were damned accurate. They demanded we give them some resources. And of course the good people of Ashenford complied. But things just kept getting stranger and stranger. After a month, they packed up and disappeared just as quickly as they come. Not long after, a stranger showed up calling himself Krieg 
The fella had so much gold surround him, you would have thought he'd been cast in it. He raised his real fat creature with a mallet, and they went around terrorizing the town and claimed it belonged to him and his men. The second us men got through our heads to put the dog down, more of these characters started popping up. Even saw a cat played a guitar, if you believe it. The fella covered in funny-looking tattoos said a word, and an earthquake shook the city. Bank went to the ground. Don't know if I'd say we were lucky, but the Krieg fella and the fat thing he had with him began fighting. Next thing you know, half the town had been destroyed before we managed to put them and their companions in the ground. So many good people died. So what happened to your face? Liz asked, a look of sincere curiosity on her face. Nell and Kelsa also looked intently at the man. Remember the fat man? He had his eye on my wife. When a man gets a bit of power, they think they can take just, you know, whatever they want. Kelsa looked at the floor of the cart and winced in anticipation of his next words. Second, I leveled my rifle at the fella. He raised his mallet in front of his face and blew flames of hell itself around me. Fire sucked most of the air out of my lungs. Another guy came round the corner with my daughter. We told her to run. That was where everything went to hell for us. He raised a buoy to my daughter's neck, had the audacity to taste my baby girl's face. Mustered every bit of strength I had to jump over and stock whip the bastard into the dirt. I bashed his face in, and in my anger I forgot that that fat bastard was behind me. He pulled out a blade of his own that he dragged across my face. It was glowing all bright. All I could smell was cooked flesh. My baby girl screamed, and that was the last thing I remember for waking up in the same spot. My wife was crying over me. Her clothes torn to tatters and her face bruised. A tear was running down Black's cheek. I asked her a simple question. Where's Mira? And her crying only intensified. I knew in my heart she was dead. The only peace I had was knowing that she wasn't used like my wife. The fat one had that much decency, seems. Didn't stop the rage burning in my heart, though. Tal, my wife, didn't hold up so well, either. No mother should watch her children die. God forbid what they did to her after making her witness the death of our only child. Liz started crying as well, as Black continued on. The next day, I put on my bandolier and grabbed my rifle. I was going to make him pay. That was when I stopped by. The singing cat told me to get lost for my own good. I wasn't having it continued only to find myself in between Krieg and that tattooed man. They began shouting, and their two partners started destroying everything. I barely managed to get out of the fray as the building collapsed around me, and people were launched high into the air, mutilated by the time their bodies touched the ground. I ran to my now burnt home, where I walked into the cherry on top. Liz butted in. I like cherries. Black's tears were flowing freely. I don't. Kelsa felt disconnected from the story, as if all of it were just a fabrication. She'd begun thinking all of it was, maybe even the people she killed. Maybe she had died there, and this was supposed to be her hell. At the very least, it was quite entertaining. By the time Black had finished his story, the wagon pulled into the crippled town. We've rebuilt what we could. It ain't much, but it's all I have left. Kelsa hopped from the back of the cart. How about we grab some grub? Liz was quick to snap from her sad state and had a big grin all over again. Black hopped down and untied the birds. They trotted off in a very methodical manner. Been staying at an inn. Brendel take good care of us. They walked along and took a look at the sights. Most of the town still looked like it had gone through the great war that unified the five federations back in their world. The bank was a shack with four hastily made pillars and a gallows sat beside that. The bar was directly across the street, and a large turbine windmill sat beside it with many wires running beneath it. They made their way inside the bar. It was the direct antithesis to the outside of the establishment. The tables were well dressed in white cloth. The floor is a clean velvet-like carpet, and a chandelier lit the place quite well. A bar centralized the space, and a medium-set middle-aged woman sat behind, polishing a flagon. She flipped the flagon into the air, and it landed perfectly on the counter pulled out a bottle from under the counter and proceeded to fill it. Thanks, Brim. Black said as he walked over and slapped a large wad of crisp green notes on the counter. Kelsa and Liz looked at the paper currency curiously, having never seen anything like it before. Mind setting us up with some grub? She gave him a wink as she took the papers and went into the back. She eventually came out with three plates of some kind of meat and a whole baked potato. Liz wasted no time picking up the steaming potato and shoving most of it into her mouth. She promptly let out a bit of a yelp and put it back on the plate to cool. 
Reckon you should let it cool a minute or so. We like our food warm here. Brenda stopped and looked over at Nail for a moment. He put up a hand and she stared only a moment before going back to polishing another flagon. Interesting friends you brought back along with you, Black. Care to introduce them? Forgive me, ma'am. Truth be told, we met on the road. What did you say your names were? Liz perked up. Well, I'm Liz, and this is Kelsa, and this guy's Nell. Thank you for feeding us. As she said this, Nell picked up his plate and bit into it, shattering the ceramics. How exactly did you say y'all came about black? Well, I was out hunting for some of those summoners again. Happened upon a fight. You can trust these three enough, Bren. She looked at them all a long moment, let out a sigh, and then went back to polishing the flagons. If I were you, I'd clean yourselves up at least. Every one of you looks like a corpse, especially him, motioning over to Nell, who had a bit of a knot from where Liz's him. Oh, and don't go telling folks you have anything to do with that summoner's business. Bad history, you see, even if there are decent ones amongst you. Kelsa got the feeling that they should be thankful that the bar happened to be fairly deserted. There was only one other man in the bar, a fat guy in a trench coat, his cut of meat and potato untouched. As she locked eyes with him, he scribbled some notes on a notepad and walked out. She quickly tried to follow, but the second she was out the door, the man was gone. She came back in. Uh, pardon me, do you know who that man was? Brenda looked up. Can't say I ever asked him. He comes through Ashenford every now and again. Never seems to eat what I give him, but he pays well enough, so I'll feed him. She walked over and grabbed the plate. Sure, the birds won't mind the treat every now and again, though. Black, grab the other key from behind the counter. I'm sure the ladies don't want to sleep with your ugly mug around. Black took another sip from the flagon, a little spilling out of the side of his face. Right kind of you, Bren. They made their way upstairs. All right, ladies, you can get some rest in here. We'll figure all this out tomorrow, right? He held a large, antiquated key out, placed it into the lock. It seemed to stick for a moment, but eventually an audible click was heard. Nell started making his way into the room behind them when Liz turned around and gave him a gentle shove out the door. Girls only, Nell! And he looked incredulously at her before the door slammed in his face. Looks like you'll be bunking with me, partner. Black said with a crack of a smile on the good side of his face. The rooms were of immaculate quality, adorned in the same velvet-like carpet. A small ceiling fan lit the room from the center, and a pair of bunk beds lined either side of the room. Liz ran off to the bathroom and let out a small, shrill scream of delight. Kelsa walked over, and a bit of air escaped her mouth as well. The bathroom was at least half the size of the room. It had a five-foot by five-foot hot tub and a well-stocked cabinet of toiletries. What is this place? Kelsa said in disbelief. Not a second later had Liz begun to strip and splash into the tub that already had steam rising off of it. Kelsa covered her face and walked back out of the room. Kelsa sat on the bottom bunk. What a day, she thought to herself. She glanced over at the lever-action rifle Liz had set on the other bunk across the room. She couldn't help but think of all the ways she could have died today. Sighing, she remembered she still hadn't answered the prompt from the interface. As she pulled it up, she noticed the tree icon was no longer lit. The only remaining option was that creepy-looking cherub button. She reached out and reluctantly pressed, Please don't let me regret this. A silvery light blinded her, and the sound of bells ring in the air. As her eyes adjusted, she saw a three-tailed fox-like creature bouncing about the room. Whoa, this is cool! Cool, what's this? Ooh, pretty! It seemed to have a very keen sense of curiosity. Um, are you my summon? The creature ran under the bed, totally ignoring her. Cool! Kelsa sighed. I'm talking to you. Its head poked out from under the bed. I'm Esther. Who are you? Its face seemed to have a permanent smile on it, and it looked up to Kelsa. The creature's coat showed a golden color with a deep purple amethyst stone and a triangle pattern from the top of its skull to just before its eyes. It had a short snout compared to a fox, but its body was very similar to one. Nice to meet you. I hope you'll show me a lot of new things. I'm Kelsa. Judging by how excited this room makes you, I'm sure you'll be very satisfied with the things to come. You do know what you were summoned for, correct? Ether's face looked up again to, to kill the other summoners, right? Don't worry, I can do that. Kelsa frowned a bit, thinking about the whole situation. Beats being in prison, she thought to herself. I formally accept to serve you. On condition, you continue to satiate my curiosity. With that, Esther continued jumping around the room. After an hour or so, Liz came out wrapped in a towel. I feel great! 
With that, she raised her arms in a large arc, and then her eyes caught Esther. She immediately ran over and squeezed the fox-like creature. It tried to escape, but Liz caught one of its tails and pulled it back into her embrace. Oh my god, you are so cute! Kelsa looked over at the two of them. That's Esther. She's my familiar. Liz's jaw dropped. I'm so jealous! Mine's so ugly! Nell let out a loud sneeze. Quiet down. I'm trying to get some shut-eye. Black had responded. The morning came quickly, and Kelsa did her best not to wake the sleeping bundle next to her. Liz was halfway out of bed, snoring loudly, and there was someone's arm dangling above her. She got out and saw an unfamiliar face staring back at her. The girl's hair was raven black, and her pallor was almost gray. Her eyes were sharp. Their eyes only met a moment before she pulled the blanket over her head. Kelsa decided to head downstairs for the time being. As she left the room, she heard the boisterous noise of townsfolk downstairs. There was a buffet of sorts set up where a long table was brought out laden with meats, breads, and many curious dishes that she didn't recognize. One in particular reminded her of the bird she had seen earlier that pulled the carts. Brenda, the barmaid, waved her over. Help yourself, dear, she told her while holding out a plate. She went over to the table and started loading it. She couldn't help but try a bit of everything, and the environment felt kind of nice in its own way. She found a seat at the bar next to a faint green-skinned woman with large tusks protruding from her mouth. She looked pretty vicious at a glance, but she gave what Kelsa thought was a smile, and they began to converse. It wasn't long before Nail and Black stepped into the place from the outside. Kelsa hadn't noticed them until Black came over and asked for a flagon. He had a new rifle on his back, along with an extra bandolier. Your friend awake yet? Got a present for her. Kelsa looked over. Not quite. She seems pretty content. She couldn't help but choke back a smile, thinking of Liz hanging halfway out of the bed, passed out, snoring loudly. It was probably why the other woman had to look at her with that face. I see. Well, I got some information for y'all. Set you on the right path, I'd imagine. In the meantime, couldn't hurt to grab some grub. Nell was already standing across from the bird head and took a large bite out of it. A few shouts were heard over the bolster. You the fork, you heathen! Yeah, you, Bones! Kelsa felt she might need to intervene, but nothing came of it, luckily. Liz made her way downstairs, Black's rifle strapped to her back. Good morning, she said with her best grin. Mind if I trade you? The rifle means an awful lot to me. Liz didn't appear to have been paying attention, seeing the large spread on the tables, not too far from them. The barmaid held out a plate. I wouldn't stand between a girl and her food if I were you. He raised his hands in protest, and Liz wasted no time grabbing the plate and filling up. Liz's stomach looked visibly distended after her fourth plate before she finally belched her satisfaction. Black finished his third flagon and looked over. Alrighty then, first off. Liz pulled off the rifle from her back and passed it to Black. I understand. Thank you, miss. He pulled the new rifle from his back and gave it to her along with the extra bandolier. She cycled the action a few times, then threw it on her back. Most seemed content while this happened, but more than a few eyes had looked over, especially to the fox creature that was now darting between tables and eating scraps off the floor. Black pulled out a map. I'm sure you heard earlier, I've been hunting summoners, so I have a good bit of information on where to find a few key players I've heard about as of late. First off, we're here, he said, pointing to a small dot on a central island. There were six islands total. Each bit of land was easily twice the size of their own world. I understand that there are three places near here that have reported summoners. He pointed to the coastline. This is about a four-day journey south. Supposedly there's someone raising bodies in the cemetery around there. Six days east in the town of Isleth. There are reports of a flame user burning down buildings on a whim, enslaving many of the townsfolk for their amusement. And about ten days to the north, there seems to be a group of children bolstering a large force. Some of them are reportedly summoners as well. Dearest readers, it's now time for you to decide where our group journeys next should they investigate the coastline where bodies are being raised from the dead, travel east where a supposed pyromancer has enslaved townsfolk and burned down homes, maybe make their way north where children have supposedly started amassing a sizable force, some of them reportedly summoners. Let's write a story. Let's play a game without the dice.